You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hello and welcome to episode 56 of the Soul Forge podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey folks, I'm your regular host, Sean, and with me, I've got a special crew, people I've known for a long time. They're making their debut on The Soul Forge podcast to my left, I've got Dave. Say hi, Dave. Hello. To Dave's right, and my left, I've got Renee. Hello. And to my right, it's Bob. Hello. They sound very enthused to be here. It's very exciting. We're at Renee's basement. His uh, family is out of town, so we all thought we'd get together and record a podcast about Forks in the Road, which was Dave's idea. Say something, Dave. It's your idea. Full of good ideas. Let's see where this thing goes. All right. So, Dave is up from North Bay. He traveled up here, what, yesterday? We came up yesterday, drove about three and a half hours uh, to visit Renee. His family's out of town. We haven't seen each other for a little bit, so it's always good to reconnect. Uh, Renee and Dave are cousins. Right. Yes. Yeah, we, we go way back. We go way back. Uh, we all met, well, you guys met wherever you met because you're family. Uh, Dave and I met in, I believe, 1996 in North Bay. You went to Canada College. Yeah, I was, I was in Canada. I was taking broadcasting. You went to Nipissing. We had some similar friends. Yeah, you were dating a girl, she uh, introduced me to Renee, and uh, Renee said, years later, he said, why don't you come up to Timmins, move up here, and I said, there's no way I'm ever coming up to Timmins, and yet a year later, here I was. Right, so there's your first, the first, not necessarily the first fork, but a significant fork changed your life. That's right, exactly. And Bob, we've known for what, about 10 years? Roughly, give or take, because you guys work together. I, I've known them since probably about uh, 2005. Yeah, 2005, 2006. Okay, okay. And when did you and I meet? Around that Around time, that too? Around that same time. Yeah. yeah Has it been that long? Sure I like to keep my circle close. Yeah. yeah. Keep things tight. <laughs> just how we like it. There you go. There you go. So, yeah, we were just uh, having some drinks and talking about a podcast, because episode 56 was due and uh, we thought about childhood uh, memories uh, we thought about uh, girlfriends that we've had and we thought let's have something nice and neutral and we'll talk about forks in the road decisions that we made that led to different things <clears throat> and how our lives could have been different so i'll, I'll start uh like you said uh we met in north bay but i could have chosen to stay in sault ste marie and gone to college there or I could have gone to Windsor, or I could have gone to uh, Thunder Bay. But I chose North Bay, because it was the closest. And Sherry was going there, and I was obsessed with her since grade 9. <laughs> so that's what I chose. See, for me, it was a little bit similar, too. I, I had other options, other places I wanted to go. But I, I ended up choosing North Bay. Um, why? I don't really remember, but I, like, I sure am glad I did. What would have happened if I went somewhere else. I, I really don't know. I haven't thought about it much, but I guess that's part of the thing that we can talk about today and uh, about those forks. And what the question, another thing too is, I'd like to know is like, what, how do we define a fork? What, what is a fork? It's, it's a major decision. A major decision. But it doesn't necessarily feel like a major thing at the time. But hindsight, looking back, mm -hmm. there it is. Because yeah, I followed Sherry to North Bay, but what if I had stayed in the Sioux? I, I would not know any of you guys right now. Right? Obviously. Your yes. life would be so much worse off. <laughs> right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yes. Or, who knows, I could have stayed in the Sioux, and I could have got a job at the Lottery Center, and I could be an upper management now, making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. I wouldn't know you guys, and my life would be so much poorer, and yet I would have all these fancy trips all the time. Right. So, there's a fork right there. Okay. So, I have a question then also, and another follow-up question, and if you want, you can edit this out later. But, um... If we're going to look back at the forks in our road, you kind of have to uh, 
ask yourself, what were the results of those decisions? Right. So are we, are we comparing to where we are now? But what part of our now are we looking at? Are we looking at uh, how do you define where you are now? Is it your relationships? Is it your job? Are you happy? You know, what, are, what were the effects of those choices, of those forks? Right, because are we better off than the magical alternate reality that we could be living? Mm -hmm. Or are we, are we in our best option? Like, whatever you choose, does that become the best thing for you? Right. What do you think, Bob? Yeah. Um, I, I've given it a bit of thought, but I try not to think really about it too much, because what, what is, is. You know, you go back and you think, what if that had turned out a different way? You know, something in your past, what could have happened? But there's no way to know. Yeah, what the exactly. Result is. Yeah, so I, I, I try to be personally. I try not to think about it too much because it could have been better. It could have been worse. It is what it is. Do you have a specific memory, a specific fork that sometimes you think, "I wish I would have chosen that." Uh, no, no, I regret nothing. Good. That's a good yeah. attitude. <laughs> I look at it the same way. Is when you're looking back at a fork, I don't think I live in regret. I wouldn't want things to be different. But you can still say, I wonder how they would have. But if you ask yourself, I wonder how it would have turned out, is, does that some, to a little bit say, do I have some regret? Maybe a little bit. See, because I think about that sometimes, and I think, you know what, I would like to be able to watch the alternate reality version television show of what my life could have been had I picked this differently. Like, like those Which Way books that we read in... Yep. Uh, in Choose Your Own Adventure. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you could go back and start over. Turn to page yeah. 34. To see how the end result is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So what about you, Renee? Do you have any uh, major forks that you think about? Like well, anyone who knows me knows me. I'm a big movie buff. And back in the day, um, I worked a lot of uh, volunteer hours for a TV station. And I used to make a lot of homemade movies and stuff like that. And I actually put together a portfolio, applied for Niagara Film School, was accepted, and chose to follow my cousin's uh, footsteps because we were very close at the time. We're pretty much... We're pretty much brothers, <clears throat> a little bit step up from cousins there. And uh, I thought, you know what? I've done TV for so many years now, and I love music just as much as I love movies. So it was a natural choice to go down the radio route. And I fell in love with radio. I did all kinds of stuff and uh, excelled at it, graduated with honors. But uh, you don't make a living in radio. So now you're working in IT. I work in IT. <laughs> so you didn't do movies, you didn't do radio. You did computers. I did computers, but all those things you can still do with computers. So you can, you do all your editing for the audio and your video on computers. It's just, uh, if it's that important, you'll make the time to do it. Uh, so let's do a thought experiment. Say you had gone to this Niagara Film School. Where do you think your life would have taken you? You certainly wouldn't be in Timmins, I bet. Uh, I highly doubt I'd be in Timmins. I, I, I question whether or not I would have ended up back in my hometown. Because you guys are both from, not good. Both from Aurelia, right? Yeah, right. we both kind of escaped Aurelia. Uh, we reached escape velocity and uh, <laughs> never got pulled back in. But it's uh, still good to visit, and there's still a lot of family there. But uh, I don't know. Either I would have been the next uh, Quentin Tarantino, or I would have been the next guy uh, working at uh, Walmart or KFC or something. Who knows? <laughs> You'd be that really snobby guy working at Blockbuster telling people yeah, the for films. sure. Yeah. I'd be the blockbuster guru. <laughs> That's a dead-end job right there. <laughs> exactly. So in the hindsight, I would say I definitely made the right choice. And uh, all the forks I chose in the past I went on led me to uh, really uh, great family that I have and I built with uh, my wife, who is my best friend. And uh, Hey. It's all good. Second best friend. Yeah, second <laughs> best friend, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe Heath. I'm Tony Heath. And we're going to watch every episode of Doctor Who and then talk to you about it. Every episode? Every single one. In order? From an unearthly child to, you know, the future. And we're going to do it in a podcast that we call... The Watchathon of Rassilon. Watchyourrassilon.com. And we're also a part of the ESO Network. So check us out or whatever. Please. Stay Rassil Awesome. Stop trying to make Rassil Awesome a thing. Nope. Anyway, so yeah, so you have been here in Timmins for how long? I've been in Timmins for almost 18 years. 18 years. Okay, so you got here in 2000? Well, late, uh, early 2000, late 2000, 2001 time. Okay. Somewhere around there. 
Yeah, because I got here in March of 2003. Yep. Just about a year after you moved here, I guess, you'd said, why don't you come on up? Absolutely. And then I said, there's no way in hell. I'm I don't know gonna... anybody here. I need more friends. Uh, you should move up. Yeah. And I didn't know anybody here. Yeah. And yeah. you didn't come. I, I didn't. <laughs> no. Wait, you waited for some uh, lady to entice you to come up. Yes, because I was living in North Bay still. Yeah. And uh, Lynn and I met, which you can hear all about on episode 39 of this Soul Forge podcast. Uh, so I won't get into it much further there. But anyway, needless to say, she was from here. She got a transfer up here. And wouldn't you know it? This is where I found myself, the last place I ever thought I'd be. Oh, at least there was somebody you knew. At least there was somebody I knew. Yeah. Yeah. So I came to Timmins, or as I like to call it, the land that culture forgot. <laughs> Here I am. Dave, you're still in North Bay. I am. So I look back, I remember now why I went to, to Canada. And it's, it's forks. It's fork after fork, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to go to Ryerson. That was my goal. I want to take radio and television arts. My English marks were just not good enough. Uh-huh. I didn't get in. So I said, well, if we have Canada, they have a radio program and a television program, that's going to be my way. So I went to, I enrolled in broadcasting radio, went through there, but they forced me to take a course on uh, making web pages. Oh. As soon as I took that, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I abandoned radio, television, I went right down into the internet, and uh, I've been there ever since. And the internet was just in its infancy back then. That's right. It was just starting out. And now, what do you do for a living? So now I, I own a web and marketing firm. We're based out of Toronto and Montreal. I do that um, all day, every day, it's, and, it, and it's still fun. You're enjoying it still? Yep. So you picked the right career? I picked the right career. I, uh, so I, I chose North Bay, right? And I met my wife. She went to Nipissing. And I knew her from those days? How well? No. <laughs> not, uh, not as well as you know her. <laughs> and um, yeah, so then we met. I had a job. She was still in school. We stayed in North Bay. She got a job right away. We've been there ever since. And North Bay is a beautiful town. It is. It is. It has a lot to offer. It's getting better and better. I love visiting the cities. Like I like going to Toronto, but um, I also like being able to drive to work and it only takes me five minutes. Which is nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And North Bay is real hot on the uh, TV and movie scene right now. All the Hallmark movies are filmed in North Bay and uh, you've got that new Carter movie. Carter. And, Carter uh, TV show that's uh, being filmed there. Jerry O'Connell, right? Jerry O'Connell. Yeah. yeah. Have you met him? Uh, I've, sh- I've shaken his hand. He wouldn't remember me, but I definitely got to meet him. Which hand did you shake? Both, actually. Uh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Have you met any other famous people? Hmm. No, not really. No. I try not to get too starstruck, you know. Well, I yeah. understand that. Yeah. I, I remember I went to, uh, I was in Sudbury for some reason, and I went to some restaurant, I think it was the Keg, maybe, and Dominic Purcell was there. He played Lincoln on Prison Break, mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't recognize him, but the waiter's like, hey, okay. You know who that is over there? I'm like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> but I wonder what it would take, though. What would it take for you to go up and see someone? Uh, would it, like, would it take a Star Trek actor? Would you go? If it was Patrick Stewart sitting yep. there, I, I don't know what I would do because I wouldn't want to really disturb uh, him. First thing I say to him is, no, no, you just say, you should have killed me when you had the chance, Charles. <laughs> no, <laughs> probably not. No, maybe. maybe. Okay. Never met your heroes. Four lights. Ne- never meet your heroes. Never meet your. Have, heroes. have you met your heroes? No. No, that's the point. I never meet your heroes. Just in case, right? Just I met case. Lance Hendrickson, and he is amazing, but he treated me like a child. <laughs> Probably <laughs> because I wasn't here? very talkative. I was yeah. very starstruck, starstruck when you I met him. You are a man-child. I am a man-child. <laughs> uh, my, uh, one of the most accidental celebrity uh, uh, forks that I ran into was uh, is that he, Tim Hortons in the Toronto airport area, and who was up there getting a coffee? Randy Quaid. Cousin Eddie, I was like, couldn't even talk to him. And I kept pointing him out, talking to my friend about him. He looked over, he saw us looking at him, got his stuff and bolted. Jumped in his rental car and he was gone. Well, he's kind of a crazy dude. And this was before everything happened, before the whole Hollywood mafia and everything. So. Did you thank him for saving the world? I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> I saw James Cameron at the airport once. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm th- pretty sure it was him. It was an old guy with white hair. Come on, how many of those? <laughs> well, <laughs> to him or Chuck Norris. Like. Yeah. So, Bob. Tell us more about yourself. You're from Timmins? No, I. but I've been here for 33 years. And you <laughs> just turned... 39. Not too long ago. That's right. Mm-hmm. So I moved here when I was... Six? No, you don't know. I've, uh, I moved here when I was seven, so it'd be 32 uh, years. Oof. Long time. Yes, a long time. Long time. Yeah, and before that, I was a little bit of everywhere, so... You went away to school? Uh, at college? No. No, I uh, took college here. Okay. Yeah. So there's a fork right there. You could have gone. Yeah, well, no, not really. <laughs> no. 
No, like what? Well, after I graduated high school, I was thinking about going to. Um, oh, the name escapes me right now. Um, they're they've got a really good graphic arts design program in Toronto. Fanshawe. Uh no. Humber. No. Uh, I have no idea. Anyway. Doesn't yeah, matter. I just couldn't afford to go when I was eighteen or nineteen, so I just jumped into the workforce. Yeah, it was it was a pretty pretty regular early adulthood. Um, I met my wife at, at work. I'd say probably, I don't know if I'd consider it a fork, but probably one of the better things that's ever happened to me was I got fired from the job where I met my wife at, and that set me on a completely different life path uh, as opposed to just staying, staying at that work, at that job. And uh, that actually, uh, with that path, I actually ended up going to college and uh, getting a, actually a really decent job. That's where you got to meet me. Exactly. Yeah. So there you go. notice so that all is pointing back to Rene, right? Well, it is his house. That yeah. <laughs> so that makes yeah. sense. Rene's like a big black hole. I'm like the chia pet, and you guys are like the fur growing on me. I don't think I like that right now. <laughs> <laughs> so back to your story. You got fired. So that's like an unintentional fork. It wasn't through a choice of yeah. your own. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know, basically made a choice to do this or do that, and I did that, and it got me fired. Um you know, it wasn't justified getting fired because uh, obviously the government put me on unemployment and then sent me back to school. Yeah, and then I ended up taking electrical engineering and then I ended up working at the phone company. And then I got a, a different career path after that. Now I'm a gas fitter uh, working in a utility and everything's pretty hunky-dory. So your life is pretty great. Yeah, I can't complain. So all the forks led you to your ideal life? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I wouldn't say it was. it's not completely ideal, but whose is? Yeah, if go. it was completely ideal, you would have nothing to work for. Yeah. If True. it was ideal, I wouldn't even have to work. So what you're saying is it's all about the struggle. More about the journey. I don't know about the struggle, right? Like, for every fork's a different journey, and every journey's got a different outcome, right? It's true. Yeah, because yeah, you could date this girl or you could date that girl. And, you know, whatever you choose puts you on a different path. Exactly. And just for the record, yeah. my wife told me before we got married that we probably wouldn't stay in Timmins. And that it wasn't a priority, but she is very much big into her family, and her whole family lives in one, like, small area, like, three blocks, her entire family lives there. Your in-laws are three houses down. And they're, they're very close, and I can say, honestly say, it bothered me at first that we didn't leave, but I think it's probably the best thing to happen to my kids to have so much family so close. I'd say so. And my family all down south, they're spread out all over the place, so it, it would definitely have been a different experience growing up for them, and I know... Uh, my brother, the way he's raising his kids, it's a definitely a different family experience for them because their their grandparents and their aunts and uncles aren't all as close. So, mm. so the importance of family is big for you. I know family is huge. Yeah, it yeah. could be a whole episode in itself. In fact, we were supposed to do a whole episode in itself, you and I, all about family, the yeah. in, the ins and outs and all that good stuff. Maybe we can record it later this week. Well, that's because your family is out of town, and your cousin Dave happened to come up to keep you company during the week. Exactly. Which no. is awesome. Nobody wants to be in an empty house for a long period of time. Get a dog. Get a dog, yeah. <laughs> or get a Dave, yep. which you did. Well, it's been almost uh, a year since uh, we've gotten together, so. And it's been more for you and I. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the last time we got together. Probably one of our Rebosh weekends, actually. Right, yeah. probably. One of the original ones, I think, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trip to Sudbury. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a trip to Sudbury. Good Sudbury. times, good times. <laughs> yes. No, but it's kind of funny, like Renee mentions, it's been, uh, it's been probably a year. But for me, it doesn't necessarily feel that way. Because of, you have things like Skype or Facebook. And when you hear somebody, when you see somebody writing their posts, I can hear it in their voice, right? Of so I'm kind of reminded that, no, I, I talk to people all the time or I hear them all the time. But really, um, it's not true. Right, it just So, feels so like don't, it. don't fool yourself. While those things are okay, you kind of stay in touch a little bit. It's it's nowhere close to actually reconnecting and sitting in the same room and, and laughing and, and talking, telling jokes, and just having a good time. That's true, because you could have stayed home. Mm-hmm. We could have done a Skype podcast over the uh, internet lines that you work on yep. there. And, no, and, and it's kind of funny. Like you, you, you take relationships from two years ago, four years ago, ten years ago. If you had trust and good friendships then, it seems like they... Uh, they're still there. Now those bonds are hard to break. Yep, that's true. You get good people in your life, and you keep them there. That's the goal. Yeah. 
All right. Anything else you wanted to talk about forks since it was your idea? Well, I if if we have time, it changes the subject matter a little bit. And I got on the idea from when Bob said he was thirty nine. Okay. Next year, Bob turns forty. Yes. I think some forks are more uh, mental. They're in your head. When True. you hit forty, what are, what's your outlook on life? Well, I'll tell you. Yeah. When I turned forty, it wasn't as big of a deal as when I turned thirty. Mm -hmm. I dreaded. You had a parade at thirty. I did have a parade at thirty. <laughs> Trish threw me a parade because she knows I hate parades, so. For my 30th birthday, she got her dad's truck and his boat and a bunch of people, and we all <laughs> took a tour the around the boat. The boat was the float. The boat, was, the boat was the float. I sat in it and threw out candy like you do in a parade. Yeah. Because she was funny. She's That's fine. She's a funny girl. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I hate I hate parades, watching them because I find them useless. Yeah. Being in a parade is different. That was okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you start. And when you parade. are the parade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was the parade, so that was cool. But, yeah. Six months before I turned 30, I, w I was miserable. And that's mm -hmm. when I decided, okay, I'm 30. I can't be working at the call center anymore. So I applied to the post office. I applied everywhere. I got a job at Home Depot, which was worse than the call center. But then eventually the post office called, and mm -hmm. I've been there ever since. Right. So the fork in the road of trying to get a better job. I find what's funny, when I turned 30, it wasn't a big deal. It really sunk in when I turned 31, because at that point I know there was no looking back. Uh, you had crested the hill. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. I think that's what's going to be probably when I turn 42. So, Renee turned 40 this year. I did. I turned 42 years ago. Yeah, I turned 40, uh, man, I don't remember how old I am. What year were you born? 76. Me too, so two years ago. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. What are you born? Great November. Bat. November, okay, so I'm two months older than you. Okay. All right, so I'm the old man here. So you're going to be 40 next year. Yeah. How are you feeling about that? My, I was fine. Welcome mm -hmm. to the club. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'll be okay. I, I just find, you know how they say, like, 40 is the new 30. Like, I know when I turned 30, it was like, it's it's 20, but with joint pain. And uh, 40, I, like, I, mentally, I feel the same age as I always, I don't feel like I'm maturing mentally. Uh, True. For, for better or for worse. About 27 years old in my head. Yeah. yeah. You guys? Yeah, I if, don't feel old at all. No, no. 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 My body tells me otherwise. Well, after a long day of delivering the mail in plus 40 degrees Celsius heat, yeah. that, yeah. that's brutal. And you, you're outside working, doing the lines for the gas company. And yeah. So you know what it's like. Yeah, and, you know, like, by the end of the day, you know, it's like, you, you, you're really starting to feel your age. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not like I'm the most physically fit guy. Uh, I get by, but, you know, at the end of a hard week, you know, bedtime is calling, you know, Friday night at 9 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody else fall asleep watching TV after 9? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> like, at one point, a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I fell asleep on each other while we were watching a show. <laughs> like we woke liter up. Literally on top of each other? Literally. I was, like, on top of her, and oh, she was leaning oh, against oh, my oh. head. <laughs> Nice. But yeah, that's the only thing I noticed. Like mentally, I'm still young. But yes, physically. I'm, physically, I'm passing out in front of the TV at like that's, 9, 30, 10 That's not age related. I think that's kids. That's kids. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I don't know because many a time Renee and Bob and Sean have tried to watch a movie at Renee's house <laughs> on a Friday night. <laughs> Godzilla. And we're all passed out. Yeah. We're all passed out and we've watched maybe half of it. Or yeah. Friday nights are the worst time to try and watch a movie. Yeah, you gotta wait till Sunday. When you get to the end of the week, you're done. It's been a long week. You can't, you can't do it. I find it. I'll, I'll go. I'll be going to bed earlier on a Friday than like on Monday to Thursday. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard. The to day stay that up, you but... can't stay up, but. Yeah. Welcome to old man cast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I still firmly believe that it's the weekend. And it's my right to stay up late. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Even if I still can't yeah. sleep in. Yeah. Uh, you still get that mentality that. Uh, a child mentality. The weekend's not Saturday, Sunday. It's Friday night, Saturday night. Yeah. Well, yeah. this this guy here, he's always up late. He's always texting me after I've gone to bed. What? <laughs> it's like quarter to 11, and in the morning I'll wake up, and there's a text from me. How was your day? <laughs> I'm like, I sent that way before then. <laughs> I don't know if you did. <laughs> well, I wanted to get back to you. Well, I appreciate that. So you know how we also say we don't, we don't feel old, we still feel young or even immature? Do you ever sometimes feel like get surprised that you actually pay your own bills like yeah <laughs> yes. that's my house i'm paying that i'm paying those utilities yeah. every month mm -hmm. yeah. and you, you look at everybody else and you think oh there's an adult and the, and yeah. the guy's like 32 or something <laughs> yeah he's younger than <laughs> <us>. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah so many people look so much older than us i can't get over that yeah and way younger yeah it's weird and i always felt like the young person on my street because i live on a little cul-de-sac until our next door neighbors moved in this past winter and they're only 32 and 33 and I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm not the young person anymore. Maybe I need to act a bit more mature, but it's hard. Because <laughs> why do you want to? Yeah. 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 I watched a movie last weekend. It was called Tag. Yeah. Oh, she, yeah, how is that? that? We talked about that on the Rusted Robot podcast. It is funny. It's, is it's it like a one-time watch type yeah. movie. Yeah. But it's funny. And they have a saying in the movie, something along the lines of, you only start getting old when you stop playing. 
Because uh-huh, like these guys have been playing the same game of tag for like 20 years or what. Right. Or yes. longer, I think. I think it was 35 years. or something. Yep. Yeah. So it was worth watching once at least. It's, yes. Yeah, okay. it's, a, yeah. it's a cute one. It's fun. Because we reviewed the trailer on Rusted Robot, so mm-hmm. we were... Yeah. And it's a true story, too. Yeah. Like, based on a true mm-hmm. story. Yeah. Right. You only start getting old when you stop playing. Yeah, I, I've got everything I need to play games here. I just prioritize my time in other ways. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of gaming and reading. Joys of not having kids. Right. There you go. Yeah. Right on. So do we have any other uh, topics of discussion before we close out the podcast? Well, you can grow you can grow old, but you don't have to grow up. I think that's the main message there. And the friends that uh, you have in your life that are always there, those are the ones that you uh, you got to make sure to do that extra mile to make sure you, you see them and get together with them and reconnect as much as you can. Because we're all getting older too, right, whether we choose to acknowledge it or not. Yeah, and when something's important, and if you know it's important, you uh, I was doing some research a couple of weeks ago about project management. Because I find like I have a busy life that's full of lots of stuff. And if I'm working really hard on changing my life full of stuff to changing it to fulfilling things. Yeah. So I thought maybe some project management would help me. I came across a quote and it said, you need to know what your goals are. If you don't know what your objectives are, you're, you're never going to get to where you want to be. And then it went further to say that your priorities are the things you do to achieve your goals. And that really, unless you're like the, the manager at a Toyota plant, product, project management isn't important at all. So priorities, my goals, family, strong family, priorities. Renee asked me to come visit. It was a yes. We hopped in the car and I was here. So having those priorities, you know, it's important. It is. You're right. Mm-hmm. Very good. I like that. Uh, was your fork that you took uh, to choose to come up here? Yeah, and I almost, if I didn't choose the right fork, I would have been in Cochrane, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. 11 <laughs> 101. Yeah, because that's a literal yeah. fork in the road. Yeah. You're right. All right, so uh, do you guys, uh, are you on social media? Do you have any uh, Twitter accounts, any Instagram stuff that you'd like people to follow? At David Dunkley, pretty much anywhere. Okay, Renee. At the Dunk Fodder, that's the underscore Dunk Fodder, D-U-N-K-F-O-D-D-E-R. That's on Twitter and That's Instagram? just Twitter and just Instagram. Twitter. Okay, and Bobby. I'm on Facebook, but I don't like it. So. <laughs> okay, well, that's fair enough, and everybody knows where they can reach me. Uh, so thanks for stopping by The Forge, and remember... Two roads diverged in a woods, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. This has been another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Contact the show by emailing soulforgepodcast at gmail.com or by tweeting soulforgepod on Twitter. Visit us at soulforgepodcast.com, and remember, the best way to show your support is by leaving a five-star review in the iTunes store. And, if you would, please check us out and like us on Facebook. The Soul Forge podcast was written, produced, scored, edited, engineered, and directed by Sean Vanderloo. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Darth Vaderloo. For more great content, you can listen to my other podcast, The Rusted Robot. Thanks for stopping by The Forge. We'll keep the fires lit until your next visit. I could do this all day. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.